today are chimichangas this is a video dedicated to sally anderson she's been asking for these for a long time and i was gonna put them up yesterday but the hubby was here at nine o'clock in the morning from work so yeah that's a no-go so yeah but it's here today so stay tuned for the ingredients okay so what i have is um beef stew meat you could use any meat of your choice ground beef ground pork shredded beef um chicken any meat of your choice i decided to do mine with uh the beef to meat i'm using um a teaspoon of minced garlic if you have fresh garlic use two to three cloves i'm using half of a medium or a small onion um sofrito i have sofrito because i like my meat very flavorful if you don't have sofrito use half of a red pepper half of a green pepper two garlic cloves and uh, a handful of cilantro. You're good enough with that. Uh, the cheese I decided to use is cheddar and jack, that combination. You can use Mexican fiesta, you can use quesadilla cheese, mozzarella, provolone, the cheese of your choice, as long as it's the melting kind that stretches. And then I have um, burrito tortillas. These are a lot big, it doesn't say. Trust me, they're the huge ones. Then I have lettuce and tomato, but that's for garnish, and some homemade salsa. This is the red one. If you want to know how I make my salsas, I have a, vid a video on the red salsa, the green salsa, and something, some other stuff for taquitos. So, yeah, these are these ingredients. This is really simple, really easy. Oh, I'm sorry. Salt and pepper. And if you have adobo, you can use that instead, which that is what I'll be doing. This is gonna be the adobo I'm gonna use. There's red cap, green cap, blue cap, um, this color cap. I think there's also yellow and orange. I'm not sure. But this one I'm using, use the one of your choice. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna slice up my meat. It already comes small, like in bite sizes, but I want this really small because I want it to cook fast. So, yeah. I'm gonna show you. Really small pieces, really small and really thin. I just cut it, it was like square shape, just really thin slices. That's basically all I did. I'm gonna throw them in my bowl here because we will rinse that after I'm done cutting them all up. Just tiny guys. If you prefer, like I said, you can use the ground beef, ground pork, shredded beef. All you gotta do is cook it, boil it with um I would put half an onion in there and two or three cloves of garlic. And um, yeah, boil it softly, slowly. After it comes to a hard boil, cover it up. And I'd probably boil it for 45 minutes to an hour till it's soft. Throw out the water, let it cool off, and then shred it, and then just do all of this. Okay, chopped up my meat, I cut it all up. I rinsed it really well. So before I throw it in a hot screaming pan, I'm gonna Put adobo on here. If you do not have adobo, you add salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and um, a little bit of cumin if that's the flavor you like. That's all you need to add. You don't have to add anything else. So I'm mixing it really well because I want this meat to have flavor when I put it in the pan. That's done, that's really well incorporated. And now we're going to the stove. Okay, we're by the stove. I'm gonna put my pan on. Put that on high, let it get screaming hot. I'm gonna put it this way, I don't need to. I'm just gonna wait for this to heat up. Okay, now that our pan is hot, I don't add any oil to it because the red meat already lets out a lot of fat, so. I'm going to put one here. If I try to move this meat right now from my pan, it's hard, it's stuck on there. 
because I just threw it in there, but in a minute it will release it and I can move it all around. So, once this gets going, we'll be adding in our ingredients. Remember that our pan is on our highest setting. See, now I can come apart easily. Separate. Whoever has these kind of pans, learn how to use them. That's how it works. A lot of people get upset because their food sticks. Just give it a minute. It'll do it on its own. Okay, so once the liquid starts drying off and I start to get like that frying action, that's when we're going to put in our herbs, our, you know, our garlic, our onion, and our sofrito. So we're just going to let this cook until we get frying action. I just want to step by and show you how much liquid this meat actually lets out. Look at this. I haven't added any water to it. I just have it on high and it's doing its boiling thing right now. So yeah, there's how much water is, but this, this will start to reduce in a little bit and you can start getting a little bit of frying action. If you don't have enough um, fat that the meat rendered out, just add about a teaspoon of uh, oil of your choice. It doesn't matter. It could be um, canola, corn, vegetable, or coconut, even olive oil. doesn't matter which oil you use here. So yeah, we're just going to wait for that frying action. I just wanted to show you how much water this meat let out. Okay, so our meat started a little bit of frying action already. As you can see at the bottom of my pan, I have very little to no fat. So I'm actually going to add a teaspoon of olive oil. Use the one of your choice. Any kind of oil like I mentioned before. That's what we're doing now. I just need a little bit of oil to saute our veggies. So, there we go. I already tasted my meat for flavor. If yours need more salt, pepper, or adobo, by all means, go ahead and add it. I already did mine. You didn't need anything. So first thing I want to throw in there are our, our onions. Wow. Our onions. I just, I'm sorry I didn't show you guys, but all I did was take half of the onion that I had out there. A small onion or a medium onion. I think mine was more on the smaller side. But I use half of it. If you guys like more onions, add more. This amount is perfect for the amount of meat that I have. I forgot to mention how many pounds of the meat I have, but I'll check you and let you know in the description or when I'm editing this. See, I'm getting all this nice stuff down here. That's what you call flavor. I'm gonna let my onions get a little bit more cooked off. My sofrito has a lot of garlic, so I'm just going to add like half a teaspoon. If you guys don't have sofrito, sofrito add the, uh, the whole teaspoon. If you don't have any kind of garlic but powder, then add that to it. The seasoning is more to your liking. I like my meat to be flavorful. So I'm all about flavor, guys. And now I'm going to add my sofrito. This is about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half. Oh man, once that sofrito hits the pan, it's incredible. It smells so good and it gives you flavor. Your food such good with flavor, guys. So all of this is there. I'm going to let all of this cook off. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a fourth a cup of water to this and I'm going to cover it and let it simmer for 20 minutes. So I use the same container where I had my sofrito, about a fourth cup. And now you're going to pick up all the bottom that was on here like this. That's all the flavor that's in here. I'm going to put my stove on the lowest that it goes and I'm going to let this go for like 20 minutes. It's going to tenderize the meat and pick up all the flavors from the bottom of your pan. It's gonna be delicious, I promise. So, once you've already scraped on the bottom, you see there's nothing there anymore because the meat has picked it all up. Now we're just gonna cover it up and let it cook. Remember, it's on the lowest, so here we go. Timer for 20 minutes. Okay, so. This is how the meat is supposed to look. 
I had to run off to Lisey's house because they were getting internet. So I had to put my, turn off my stove. But as you can see, the meat's already nice and tender. It has a little bit of juice. You don't want it too wet because you're going to deep fry these or just fry them if you don't want to do the deep frying. But you still have to fry them. You cannot bake this. It defeats the purpose of it being a um, chimichanga. So I'm going to let this heat up very little. And then we're going to wrap it. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to wrap this now. I'm sorry, I'm tired, I'm sweaty. Um, what I did now, I put my little wrap pot, I don't know if you guys have seen it before, and I filled it. I have like a cup's worth of oil, so I'm having that heat up while I wrap this so it could be ready to fry when we're done. Okay, so this is the brand that I buy. These are for burritos, the big burritos. I buy this brand because they really fit and pliable. If you buy ones that are thicker and you need them to be pliable, you could microwave them for a few seconds until they get, they get really soft. But I don't have the problem, that problem with these because, like I said, they're really thin and they're like super pliable. So, yeah, this is what I buy. So I'm going to take one of these. I'm only making one right now. I'm the only one at home. My counter is clean, so don't worry about that. I'm gonna dump in my meat. You feel this is like a burrito. This is guys, this is exactly like a burrito, but you're deep frying it and all the stuff is on the outside. So what I did is I put a lot of meat in here to one side. Then you're gonna wrap this around here and you're gonna hold this here and you're gonna pull it back. So you pull it back and it gives you that little give right there. Tuck in your ends and then roll. And then tuck in your ends one more time. And this is what it's supposed to look like. So nothing gets in there when it's frying. If you're not sure about your frying skills and you don't want stuff to spill out, I suggest you put a safety, uh, not a safety pin, <laughs> okay, a uh, toothpick. I don't do it because I know I'm going to fry mine down with the opening down. And I'm going to put my spatula or whatever I have holding it here until it grabs its shape before I can turn it. So... Let's go to the fun part, frying. If you want to know if your oil is hot enough, stick a wooden spoon in here. And if you see it bubble around the ends, which mine is starting to do now, that means your oil should be good enough. That's a tip if somebody didn't know it. Put it in here. If you see little bubbles coming up, you're ready. So like I said, the opening, I'm facing it down. Be careful pulling it in. I'm helping myself with a... Oh, it started to open up on me. Hold on. Okay, hold it down with a paddle. You see how the oil is nice and hot but not overheating where it's smoking and burning your stuff. So I'm just going to hold it here. No need to hold it anymore. And I'm just going to let that fry for about a minute. You know when it's time to turn it, when it's nice and golden brown. You're only going to turn it through twice. I mean once. The whole time you put it in and then just once for the other side and you should be done. You should be good to go. But don't walk away from it guys because I don't know how your stove works. Remember everything varies. You don't have to do this. I'm just doing it. My stove is on a medium high guys. What you want to do is have your plate waiting with paper towel to absorb all the grease from this. It's not time yet. A little bit more. Let me check on this side because it's easier to see for me here. Yeah, we're almost there, guys. Almost there. Seriously, it's like about a minute or two and that's it. Guess what I forgot to do, guys? I'm so, so sorry. Add about a fourth cup of the cheese of your choice. Provolone, mozzarella... Mexican fiesta mix. I'm so sorry. I totally forgot to do that, but yeah. Add the cheese to it before you wrap it up. Okay, I'm gonna turn it on. See, it's already sealed. So now it's just a question of leaving it for a few minutes there and we'll be ready to go. Okay, here it is. Completely ready to go. Look at this. There it is. A big old chimichanga. Wow, this weighs about two pounds, guys. <laughs> Make sure you turn over your stove. Don't be a scatterbrain like me. 
Okay, what I wanted to show you was if you're scatterbrained like I am, what you can do is use about a fourth of a cup of, of cheese, guys. What you do is you put your cheese all on top of your um, chimichanga, and then we're going to microwave this for about 10 to 15 seconds, okay? Okay, guys, so I melted mine for a whole minute. That's what it looks like. Then what you want to do, oh, the hubby's home. You can put salad on top, your lettuce, tomatoes on top, extra cheese if you want, or you can just eat it like that. And then, like I said, homemade red salsa. You could put it on the side, or you can put it on top. This is how I decided to do it. That way I can just dip it. So let's break into it and see what it looks like. Okay, so let's break into it and see what it looks like. It's nice and crunchy. That's the hubby just got home from work. This is what it looks like. It's nice and it's juicy. And of course, the cheese should have been on the inside and nice and melty, but I forgot about it, so this is how it came out. So, what we're going to do now, we're going to taste it and see how it tastes. It's super hot, guys. So, it smells delicious. I'm going to dump a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I can't even grab it, guys. Put a little bit of salsa on here. Not much the salsa spicy the red one is spicier than the green i'm going to use my napkin to grab it searing completely hot now you can't see it i was just waiting to see how i'm gonna what i'm gonna say mm. came out really good yummy flavorful tender mm. Really good, guys. Don't forget to give this recipe a try. I'm going to sit down and have this. So, if you guys are new to my channel, thank you so much for subscribing. Hope you like this recipe. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'm being distracted. Um, Yeah, give this recipe a try. Let me know how it comes out. And remember, this video is dedicated to Sally Anderson. She's been asking for this for a long time. So it's finally here. So thank you guys for watching. Take care and God bless.